I came in with a lot of ideas already about how I wanted to play, what I wanted to play, um, under what circumstances I wanted to play, what I wanted to play, and at a conservatory that doesn't jive super well a lot of the times. All the way up to my very final recital, uh, I was completely nude for one piece. I had a video of myself being waterboarded for another piece. In general, the school really didn't really didn't like a lot of the things I was doing. So, needless to say, <laughs> this is David Whitwell. He's known internationally as a trombonist, provocateur, and activist. Today, we'll find out why Dave isn't wearing shoes, and how classical music can sometimes be revolutionary. Truly, socially, politically, it's done all of those things in the past. There's a whole world of politics and emotions and it all goes on behind the tuxedos and behind the ball gowns and behind the, the stages of Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center and all of that kind of starts at conservatory. It's where all of these people, uh, they, they come, you know, when they're 14 or when they're 18 or 21 or 22 and the highest thing that they can hope to get out of that experience in the conservatory is a solo performance with the orchestra. And this was a problem. Dave's relationship with the school wasn't the best. So the main purpose of what they're trying to do is not creating art. It is reproducing art. So imagine if there was a painting school where all everybody did all day long was sit in front of canvases from old masters or something and try to copy them as closely as possible. Like, this would be just boring as shit, right? Any conservatory would have had a problem. Dave's just that type of guy. He always wants to challenge the world around him. And the way he does that is through music. So, I had been working on the Darius Mio trombone concertino for about four years at that point. If I'm being completely honest, I really don't like this piece. However, if I was going to win this competition, I had to play something in the standard repertoire. It was considered very modern at the time. I'm trying to make it 2015 modern, not 1950s modern. When I perform, I don't really concentrate on being technically perfect. The audience doesn't care you know, if you play a note in one position or as opposed to another position. As long as you're telling a story with what you're playing, that's what people pay to see. When you do a jazz performance, you get, you know, people clapping, people yelling, people, you know, being really positive and encouraging while you're playing. And that's something I really enjoy. But in an art music situation, if you were to look at the judges during, during this, you would have seen uh, arms crossed, perhaps somebody jotting something down on a piece of paper. And that is it, just stone-cold silence. The only feedback you really ever get is uh, when they tell you you've won or you've not won. I had a, a lesson with my teacher, and actually um, I, 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 I went to the bathroom during my lesson, and on the way back I, I saw the announcement that, that I had won. And it's something that, just in general, in conservatories, trombonists don't often win these kinds of competitions. But this isn't where the story ends. The whole point was to push the boundaries of art music. And that's exactly what Dave was going to do with this performance. And here is how he did it. Yeah, you know, we, we had a conversation in person. And, and I said, hey, you know, I, I'd really like to take this piece to an entirely new place and I'd like to add a jazz drummer and, uh, and I'd like to have a, a large improvisation section in between the first and second movement that uh, involves me and a drummer and a bassist. And I said I would pay the extra drummer and I would pay the extra bassist. Um, and he got in touch with the Darius Mio estate who controls the, the way in which Darius Mio's music is performed because he's, he's deceased. And they said in no uncertain terms, no, you may not do that to this piece. Otherwise, we would like our music back, please. I 
after I figured out I wasn't allowed to add large <laughs> improvisation sections and I wasn't allowed to add more instruments, um, I, I dove into all the articulations and the actual fabric of the music. Um, I, I cranked up the tempo probably by about 25 to 35 percent. At at one point, the the conductor told me like, "Look, this is." The, this is, you know, the, the pedal is still metal. This is as fast as we can go, and I sort of had to I had to compromise on a on a few things in that regard. The reasoning behind going barefoot to play in front of an orchestra is uh, practical and it's a bit theoretical. The practical part of it is that I tend to move a lot when I play to the point where it can be. A little distracting, it's even been described as nauseating. So feeling the ground under my feet, no socks or shoes in between, helps center me quite a bit more. And the more theoretical reason behind it is that in everything I do, I'm trying to strip away the pretension and just get right down to the art of what's happening. So wearing just a simple pair of pants and a simple black shirt and putting all the focus on the sound and letting everybody feel as natural and comfortable as possible I think really gets people into a place where they're much more receptive to new ideas. When I perform things, especially when I perform repertoire, I like to really, really stay in the moment and and let each performance be unique. I, I don't like to decide on something and then dogmatically stick to it just because I, I've arbitrarily decided this is the way I'm going to play it. At one point that concertmaster walked up to me just before the performance and said, hey, you know, we really need to know what tempo you're going to be going with for, for these particular sections. And, and I had to tell him, I don't know. We're, we're gonna find out together. I guess we'll we'll see on the other end of it what what's gonna happen. Classical music is pretty much fucked. If the idea of making a living playing an instrument really really well and in a really interesting way is to survive, we have to begin to be more relevant. Classical music can communicate in ways that other types of art never really really can. It's, it's one of the most abstract and one of the most subtle ways of communicating artistic ideas that, that, that there is. But right now the field is stuck in this quagmire of preservation as opposed to this is it a, a festival of new art and new ideas. And I think that if we're brave enough and if we play brave enough music and interesting enough music, we can foment revolution and we can make ourselves relevant today. <laughs> Continue. Clap for me, Dave. Claps and... There we are. It is now rolling. The film audio.
Thank <laughs> you. 